welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting of Tuesday, June 25th, 2019. If you'd like to rise and join me in pledging the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First thing on our agenda is to approve warrants. Um, I would like a motion to approve an expense warrant for 6-20-19 for $25,805.61. Approve a payroll warrant for 6-20-19 for $294,127.67. You have that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then I'd like a motion to approve the selectmen's meeting minutes from 5-21-19. You have a motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then uh, we'd like to acknowledge minutes and reports from other departments. We have the EMS report from May 2019 and the fire department report from 2019. You have a motion to that effect? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, for an announcement, we have the Brookfield Ecumenical Pantry is accepting donations at the Merrick Public Library whenever the library is open or at St. Mary's Church, 4 Howard Street during distribution hours, which are Wednesdays, 9.30 to 11 a.m. and Saturday from 9.30 to 11 a.m. Do either one of you have any other things you'd like to announce? With? Good to go. Okay, we're good to go. <clears throat> Our first one on the agenda tonight is Andrew Lowe, and this is with the Senior Center Design. Okay, uh, thank you, Linda. You're welcome. And uh, so as, as you mentioned, I'm here today to talk about the uh, design project that's been underway for about nine months uh, for a potential senior center here in the town hall building in the lower level. Um, just, uh, I'm gonna turn things over uh, pretty shortly to Steve McAllister from Clark and Green Architects who has been the designer for the town on this project. I just wanna give a little bit of context for the project for those uh, who may not be familiar with it or maybe at home. Um, so the big backstory for this, which is no secret, is that you know, Brookfield has a relatively aging population. So. As a town, 24% of your residents are 62 or older. Mm -hmm. There's a good chunk of folks who are in their 50s as well, so we'll be becoming seniors relatively soon. Um, the median age in town is 45 years. So those numbers compare to uh, in the county, so Worcester County as a whole, 18% of people are 62 or older, but that's 24% locally, and the median age is about 40 compared to 45 here. So that it kind of underscores the need that you have in town for services that are oriented to seniors. So um, there's been a recognition over many years that there's not really a suitable place in town or a suitable public place in town to provide basic services to seniors. So I know that there's been a, a lot of community uh, support from the local churches um, who, who have provided space for the Council on Aging to do various things. There has been efforts here in the town hall to utilize certain spaces for senior activities as well, but uh, none of those have really been deemed an ideal kind of long-term home for senior related services here. So in 2015, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, who was your um, uh, managing entity for community development at that point in time, had worked with the town to uh, seek funds through CDBG to do a planning study to evaluate potential locations for a senior center in town, if that's what the town uh, wants to, to do. And uh, they looked at a number of different options and it had come down to um, you know, the senior, the, putting a, a senior center here in the town hall or potentially looking for other options to build a brand new senior center elsewhere. And for, for various reasons, it was deemed that the preferential location would be here in the town hall. So based on that, the town asked uh, my employer, the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission, to help seek design funds in 2017. Uh, we were very pleased that the grant was awarded by the state um, and Steve and his firm were engaged to perform the design activity here. So. As I mentioned, it's been about an eight or nine month process uh, to date since uh, Steve started up. Um, we've had two widely publicized public events on this project. There was one last December. There was one this past March. 
Uh, there have been a number of working project team meetings involving the Community Development Block Grant Advisory Committee, as well as uh, members of a number of other uh, relevant town committees. And so that's kind of the back story here. Uh, we do have a, a handout here that has the proposed layout for uh, the senior center and with that I'll turn things over to Steve to kind of give you the quick version of what's proposed for five minute the five minute version. Five minute, minute work. Nice. Nice. Right. Well it's nice to be here and thank you for inviting me. Um, I will give you a very quick tour. You know where it is. Mm -hmm. We're standing over it. Yeah. And uh, this is the working drawings as they have progressed, the demolition plan explaining what has to be removed, and that there's quite a bit of stuff that oh, does. And then, more importantly, the, the floor plan layout, and just put a little bit of time into that. Um, this is the old entry where the, mm -hmm. the police station came in. We're lowering that down so that it'll be down at the floor level. We are replacing this slab, um, insulating under it, and improving drainage under it so that that will be a much drier space. The office area and reception area is here, so as people come in, they can be greeted and, uh, you know, just checked in with. Uh, there's a library, a quiet kind of space here. This is the multi-purpose, primarily dining space here. There are a couple of classrooms that can be used for various different functions. There's a small kitchen here that's intended for two things. One is as a warming kitchen for a meal service such as Tri Valley mm -hmm. that, that uh, serves a great many of the smaller senior centers in this area. And it also uh, is going to be equipped for small cooking classes now and then. Uh, this existing mechanical room is staying. There's just too much stuff in there to move. And the, the rest of the space um, will be dedicated to uh, mechanicals and electrical with a future space for an elevator at some place at some time, um, which we're assuming will be here. And if it's not there, it will probably be here. So uh, those, those will not be part of the public areas of the senior center. The restrooms will be here, men's and women's, and uh, a janitorial closet. And then this area here is the place where the pool table goes, which we were told <laughs> is a very important uh, function. <laughs> yeah, very good so function yeah. It's a, a simple layout. It's, it's not large. Uh, it's intended to meet the needs as they stand now, and it's intended to begin the process of rehabilitating this building and making that a useful space, giving seniors something they don't presently have. And uh, the uh, the entry will take place off of parking at the rear. There's currently parking here. Uh, this, some of this will become accessible in proportion to what's required by the code. And the rest of this, the stalls, even though they might not technically meet, that will be about 10 feet wide. So they're going to be adequate. And, uh, you, you would enter by coming down a ramp system under a canopy along the side in the alleyway. Uh, and there's a, there's a second exit that comes out here, which is actually right, uh, will come up underneath where the present janitor closet is and then out. So the entry canopy looks like this. This is the rear of the building. This is the side along the alley. And if you're coming from the street, you'd come down these stairs or you can come around and down the ramp. <clears throat> the accessible parking is back in this area. So that will open this up, you know, with um, a nice glazed entry door. Here you're looking back at it. And this shows the, the major space of the building, which is that multi-purpose area with the library space back in the old, uh, what I think were the cells at one time. And uh, we're, we're leaving the brick as much as we can. We are leaving the stone vault in place. That was far too expensive to, to move. And the, the whole design is, is geared toward trying to accomplish this in a straightforward and, I would say, relatively economical way. It's not an easy project, but it will. Uh, I, don't, I don't feel that it, it uh, gilds the lily in any you know, great degree. 
but there's a lot of work to be done. There. There's a lot of stuff that has to be covered, <coughs> moved, dealt with, uh, moved, removed, <laughs> and uh, you know the floors will be a, a nice composite floor, you know, wood plastic composite, which we've all seen, and uh, so it, it should be a, a very you know functional and usable senior center for the years to come. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have that are specific and, and, uh, or general. Or any Bill? Okay. Just, just uh, one of the concerns that keeps popping up is just the concern about moisture and mold and mildew and sort of being that it's you know, partially below grade. Uh, how has that been addressed in the, uh, the engineering and design of the project? We are we're, we're planning to uh, put a, a drainage system below the slab near the perimeter so that any moisture that gets in can be directed you know, and pumped back out. That's a primary uh, way of doing that. And replacing the slab should help that too because there will be a moisture barrier and insulation above so that that will prevent water entry. And then the third component of that is dehumidification. This will be an air conditioned space, and it's not primarily because it's hot, it's primarily to get moisture out and temper the air so that it doesn't retain that moisture. So it should be a vast improvement over what you have now. And this, this area in the front, too, will, will be regraded. We're actually going to open two of those windows and put two new windows. In at the rear, too. So, on the side. Um, hmm? You can see them. You can really see them, but you know, yep. there, are, there are four closed up windows along here. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yep. Mold them out. And um, the rear just gets some windows that look like the other windows. Mm -hmm. well, if I could add one thing to the your question, Bill, um, is that our understanding is that Central Street is going to be. Uh, reconstructed next year yeah and as part of that we have coordinated with the highway department um, to see what they can do in terms of drainage improvements to try to keep the water from yeah. people trading downstairs in, uh, to begin with mm -hmm. other on the rear side we're adding these two windows in between the three that are there uh, that one's actually a mechanical mover and it will remain one and then there's a small window up in the janitor closet that would become a a doorway for exiting. So here's a canopy along the side that you see there. So that, that's the yeah. quick tour. So the elephant in the room is a couple of years from now, what's it going to cost to do it? Yeah. I think it's probably in the order of one and three quarter million dollars, something like that. I think that's you know what our estimate showed. Okay. And obviously that depends on market conditions at the time. Mm. You know. But uh, which Nobody controls. They're high right now. And it could be lower. <coughs> it depends upon the economy. Oh sure. So everybody's busy right now, and we're seeing the effects of that. It's hard to get bidders, and then it's hard to get you know so, getting fairly high prices. So I've been spending a good deal of time recently uh, on elderly issues. CMRPC has been gracious enough to conduct several workshops and the like to to uh, focus on that, and one of them recently talked about the sharing of community space and as I look at this thing it's yes maybe you label it as a senior center but at the same time the, fun the functions that are provided are really community functions yeah. Yeah. so it really is as much I mean it's really the collaboration between senior and community that could make this thing work I think you're right yeah, I, I agree this design would be flexible for a lot of different mm -hmm. uses simple plan that's not tailored too much to one thing or another. Um, and that, that would provide for a lot of different uses too. Yeah, I think that goes back to why the, the committee uh, coming out of the planning phase of this mm -hmm. project thought that this w was a good location because one, it's about the right size and it's an interesting space. It's not a cookie cutter space for the seniors, but it would also be a way to, to help revitalize the town hall mm -hmm. as a flexible space, at least yeah. in the longer run. Uh, you know, because as you know, right now you basically got all the activity on this level, but you know, there's interesting space upstairs and downstairs. So. And as I see it, I mean, what this does is this sets the ground floor. Yes. Mm. 
Yeah, I, I think that's exactly right. In 20 years, it may be that the seniors need a bigger space. That's still a good usable space down there. For other things as well, it might be a youth center at that time. You know, it's, it's got many possibilities. In terms of you know, going back to your funding question, the program that's funding this phase of the project could be used towards the project, but no single grant would be enough to pay for um, something on this size unless the state changes its rules for the program. And they have made some noise about potentially allowing applications for larger projects. Um, it, you know, so you'd have to sit out future, you know, some sure. additional grants to get a larger so award, but that's not imminent. So is that CBDG? Yes, so CDBG could be used, you know, as it stands now for you know, probably a little less than half of what this might cost. So um, there are other programs out there. USDA has a program that's right. a combined grant and loan uh, project that, you know, it's always good to try for an earmark through the state legislature as well. What I was going to say uh, is, that, is that if we have things like this ready, waiting, and shovel ready, um, we, we missed getting that information in this year. But, um, and that was something I was going to bring up under other is, is start to build a relationship with the new office support that Ann Gobi has that, that we, we may have missed some of the communications because they're communicating a little differently than they have in the past. Well, we've been working on them. Yeah. I've met with them twice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking for about 80, th I've been, I've been looking for about $80,000. That's yeah. my target. Yeah. <laughs> so, so back, but back to this one, but we'll, we'll, we'll do we'll that other, other, right? Yeah. So b back, just so we're clear, if we're talking um, 1.7 ish, mm. right? CBDG is half of that. Yes. So as it stands now, you can apply as a single town up to eight hundred thousand dollars in any grant, and there are some, you know, overhead costs and things like that. So not oh, all of that would be. No, you know, no but it, it would help mitigate. Yeah, yeah it would it would we could mitigate. Take a big chunk out of it. The one caveat, as we've discussed, Clarence, in the past with block grant is. If you apply to, to do this project, a senior center project with block grant, you have to continue using the space as a senior center pretty much only for five years. Okay. After that, it becomes flexible space. Right. Yeah. So yeah. now let's move down this, because it, it, they, the se session down in Oxford, wherever it was, right? They were talking that community space, push community space. Mm -hmm. So are there grants other than CBDG that are rel more community based? There are some out there. I mean, there, there are a lot of ways to approach this. The, the trick is that every grant program wants has to it, make sure it, that you attached. have all the other funding yeah. secured before you can get the grant. So it's a matter of sequencing. Um, there is the, the state ADA program that perhaps parts of this could be covered by. Um, there, as I said, USDA has grants and loans. Um, and one of the nice things about their loan side, not that anybody wants to go for loans if there are grants available, but you don't have to have a bond rating to utilize their loans. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that may be now, a factor here. If I could ask, now that USDA, wasn't that, isn't that what Wagon Wheel Mobile Home Park put in when they got their, they have one of those when they put in their storage system? Yeah, right I think that's under the same umbrella of yeah. USDA Rural Development. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's the exact same yeah. program, but it is the similar mm -hmm. financing model. So it really says that we've got a bunch of homework to do. Yeah, I mean, this funding. isn't something that you're going to be able to go out and try to build, you know, next spring. Oh, no, no, it's no take, we understand that. You know, a lot of community mm -hmm. support and, and uh, a lot of, you know, investigating what's out there and, and you know, monitoring the, the market conditions as well because, it, you know, there could be a 15% difference between, you know, when the economy's bad well, and when it's thriving yeah. um, for something like this. That's true. It's a pretty complicated project, but I think it's uh, yeah, and, and one of the areas of support. Yeah, one of the on the USDA piece, mm -hmm. they've been hanging around these sessions and really looking mm -hmm. to that next next project in this area. So they're, they're in tune of wanting to do something, yeah, you know, for their purposes as well. So the thing that we need to think about, and it, really this is Kathy's time mm -hmm. of doing some investigation as to what approaches we we might want to take. And again, getting back to Bill and his committee and his recommendations mm -hmm. as far as how we might approach um, moving this. I, I guess the, my question, which kind of, not to sort of push you, you know, moving on to the next steps though, is who will then facilitate the next steps? Because the next step is really putting together a funding package and a presentation to the town. <clears throat> is that something that the select board is looking for town hall? 
the town improvement committee to do. It's, it hasn't really been. It's been in the CDBG grant committee for the bulk of this process. Mm. But yeah. I almost feel like we need some sort of a separate one-off where we get a rep from CDBG yeah. town hall improvement and our and our grant writer and get like a small working group together, maybe not a formal committee, but see if we could get some sort of a representative working group because I think we don't know yet until we until we explore the options, whether it's CBDG, because that's the, the best we have in the offing, whether it's a combination of CBDG and perhaps the loan program, whether it's, you know, and, and plus just the whole getting uh, getting what what the dollar amount is, right, so that we know what we're even chasing if we, if we tried to do it in the next, like, year or two. Not that we would, but just... We have to work to some number, right? And it's just like with the police station. We got a number, went back and sharpened our pencil, went back and figured out how we make it work, right? So. And I know an yeah. expert in the room, yeah. and it's not me. On what? How to make that work? <laughs> yes, Mr. <So>. Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I will take it as an action, though. Is is I. Um, I'll reach out because I've been I've been horrible in my participation in CDBG, so um, I'll take it as an action to take it to that committee mm -hmm. to see if we can get a rep from that committee. Bill, would it be yourself, or is there somebody else? From well, that I'm committee? definitely on board to be part of any any steps going forward. Um, okay. And that's, that's my yeah, but I, I think there's a certain amount of collective. Steve, did you want somebody to at least be part of the discussion? Or do you want to take it back to your committee and find out if somebody wants to be part I of the discussion? That's what I would do. This, <clears throat> you know, this is certainly my introduction to this project. So, right. <clears throat> so maybe we circle back around in our yeah. July yeah. meeting and yeah. Yeah, something together. Yeah, we can but circle back. <coughs> because I see this as the ground floor. Yes, I mean, so we're going to get the air and mm -hmm. the issues that we, we, you've identified, Bill. It gets them. We're, we're working. Mm -hmm. It Otherwise, gets, we're not. Yeah, it gets rid of all the problems that we've had downstairs. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great first it step. Is, yeah. Or second step once we get yeah. the path yeah. and the rest of the way. I think we're on step like 45 right now. <laughs> <laughs> but we big, have, big, giant steps versus the little steps. But we have so. to find, though, I mean, I know one of the rooms down there is uh, being used for storage for a lot of the town records, so we'd have to find room to put that. Well, we've already, well, yeah, well, we should maybe, be able to. Yeah, maybe going yes. upstairs. They'd have to go, well, that's where they were at one time. They were upstairs, and now they're down. So, so excellent. Yeah, excellent. Thank I you. like it. So thank, thank you, you for the pre uh, for the presentation from both of you. You're welcome. Do we need any type of motions or just a discussion? Re record of the discussion is enough because I'm trying to keep I think notes. just a discussion that it'll Well, you're going to go off oh. and... Yeah. Form a working group. Okay, so oh, I'll, yes. make a, I'll make okay. a motion to go ahead and, and, and form a nominal working group and we'll come back with a membership list next I'll, meeting. I'll second that. Sounds good to me. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. That's good. Thank you. Thank you for. Thank Does you. it look nice? It would Very be not really nice to see. Yes, that's yeah, how yeah, I yeah, feel too. I'm really impressed with what our grants come up with and all the work that they've done. And yeah. I think they've mm -hmm. heard the concerns and the drafts that they've made and really have focused on keeping the project appropriate to the community the towns mm. and for the building and they're to be commended for their work. Well we certainly hope that we're able to get it. You know? And I just wanted to say one thing about timing. So um, I think the board is aware that the grant that's funded this phase was just extended but I see plans to wrap this up and we need to get a couple mechanical drive. Very so close, yeah we're probably we have to go to the State Historic Commission, so it should be a problem. We have to go before the ZBA, which hopefully won't be a problem, but we, we passed muster with the local Historical Commission and with no problem, so I think that you know, I'm confident once that little trail is, has been gone down and been finished. I mean, the, the drawings themselves are about 98 and 99 percent. The specs are ready to forbid, you know. And, uh, and certainly for the grant. So. Thank you. Okay, next on our, our agenda is to sign the Austin Design Amendment contract. Motion to sign. Second. 
I but did. I wanted also to mention that it had gone, um, they did an adjustment in the fees, and it's $1,500, and I know that the Town Hall Improvement Committee already approved of that. Well, you're, you're the awarding authority, so we, we have no authority to sign or approve it. Oh, yeah, I understand that, but you had, Karen had told me that you had met and you approved this $1,500. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion to sign all three members yeah, of the motion. board of selectmen. So just a matter of saying aye. All in favor? Aye. aye. Okay. And then we have to get the town accountant, and we also have to get the town council to sign it too. And this has already been reviewed by the town council? Um, no, she's probably going to approve of it. I, I don't know. Okay, Bill? Hey, Bill. Uh, I'm Bill? sorry, Bill. We already voted on it, but I did have one question. Has this already been reviewed by town council? Which part? Austin. The Austin, Austin contract. Uh, it's, it's the contract's already been approved. The con you've already signed the contract about... Oh, this a is year just the amendment this is just, this is just yeah, this is just an it, amendment. Yeah, because it has a signature for town council on it. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great, thank you. This is just a fee, fee adjustment more so than the yeah, that's what it is. It's fee adjustment. Okay. And the next one is here. This is another, it's a uh, letter also to authorize the chair for the THIC to apply for the ADA variance. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think we all have to sign this one. Because there's three of them. Mm -hmm. That's the door handle thing. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. hey, on, on that particular topic, that's, that was a really slick solution for the for the doors. We can credit Bill. We, we can talk town hall stuff if you want, right? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to read Sure. Because um, on, the, on the sort of item of the town hall ADA variance, I might speak a moment. Yeah, sure. sure. I, I don't want to belabor the meeting any longer than I have to. Um, but the variance that we're looking for is for the platform lift that was voted on a year and a month ago and uh, we have to apply for a variance to the architectural access board because it doesn't meet the full requirements for accessibility there are some they allow it for as a variance item and apparently they're getting more and more strict about that so we've been working our way through this application for a while and now we feel it's ready so we're preparing it to send out so that's why the request for that um, We've also, as the Town Hall Improvement Committee, been doing minor accessibility improvements based on the um, ADA report that was provided. Um, I think you might have seen, because all the doorknobs aren't allowed, they have to be all latch. Yeah. So we tried out one latch on a, the door going into the clerk's office, and um, it was a $20 version of a $150 doorknob that we just had, we just put in to replace the old. It's a it's not perfect, it's not super heavy duty, but it works and meets the re requirements. So it's kind of an experiment to see how the $20 version of the fix works. So, so far works. we haven't heard any complaints. Yeah. It works. So that's a it good works. sign. <laughs> um, just on other items that we're tackling, uh, we've got the electrician who is taking care of the electrical work in the what's going to be the new tax collector's mm -hmm. office and removed the wiring from mm -hmm. what's going to be the new bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, so that we were able to combine that, that worked out well. We had a setback because of our, our plumber <clears throat> that we had in co under contract um, backed out um, because of an injury. Um, so we've had to go out and find a new contractor. We believe we do, we'll be voting on that tomorrow at our meeting. In which case we'll be able to move forward with the bathroom project um, very soon in terms of gutting that space, putting in the plumbing and putting in the new bathroom. Um, it could be in the next couple months that we get that project. That's good, that's standing. Completely. More or less. Hopefully, I don't want to say done because every time we say that, then something else comes up. Um, <laughs> it's an old building. Yeah. Um, so those are sort of the big items that the Town Hall Improvement Committee is tackling right now. Um, 
Yeah. So, any questions for us in terms of what the progress of the committee has been in mm -hmm. items? Thank you for your service. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Lots of work. Yeah. Slow and steady. Mostly slow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's pretty steady. Yeah, it's going to get done sooner right. or later. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Bill. The next one on the agenda is to sign the Lennard Engineering Invoice for the Hayden Hyde Project. Motion to sign. Now, what's the amount? The amount is, it's a grant. It's $750. Great. Uh, second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the next one is to sign the BETA invoices for 15 Post Road. And these did not, uh, this came in from CM, from CMRTC, right. and um, this wasn't sent out until 6419. They had sent this, and this is on the Finney property. Right. Okay. And as we motion to sign motion that to invoice, sign that. Uh, it would appear, Andrew's already gone, but it appears Andrew will be back with us on July 9th, mm -hmm. where we will talk alternatives. Uh, he has yet to hear back from Mass Development and their uh, activity and how they might yeah. be uh, part of this. But I'm hopeful for the 9th we'll have different approaches to Finnick. Okay. Yep. And this is this is another grant also. And let's see what the total task here is on the fruit. Because yeah. there was, there was um, some reporting, um, there was site plan, public representatives, and one of the totals for one was uh, 5250 if you want, if you need that back. Okay. And, and the big deal is yeah. that this is several hundred thousand yeah. dollars yeah. per cleanup. Mm -hmm. It is not, um, at one point we had a document that told us to clean up Finney was 40,000. We had another document that said it was going to be 400,000. It is probably yeah. going to be in the order of $400,000 of cleanup activity uh, yeah. to make the property whole and yeah. usable. Then there was another one for $400 on there also. Okay, and this is and the good news is the beta folks have actually approached at least one potential uh, us potential user of a space like this. Okay. Not that there's not any sign up or anything, but that they have at least had conversation and hopefully they'll share some of that on the night. It's, it's going to be a difficult part. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Right. Well, we're going to say it's a difficult. It's going to be a difficult project oh, as yeah. far as the property to move because the two properties should have been connected at one point. Yes. They never were. I know they were. So it makes it a little more difficult where there's readings on both sides. The next one here is to, um, is to sign and pay clock and green invoice number three for the senior center. And that's another grant. It was 25200 Dollars. Through CBDG. So, a motion to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now the next one here is also um, it's a, to sign the CDBG grant um, part four, seventeen, and eighteen. And these are invoices for CMRPC. Yeah, these are the invoices for the FY twenty eight. That's what that one is. So just just while we're talking about this, Kathy's been working very closely with Andrew and Eli yeah, on the grant projects that we've been working, and what we need oh. to consider over time is how Kathy can take on more responsibility 
so that uh, we can maybe more cost effectively use these funds specific to town uh, efforts rather than uh, C CMRPC. Not to say that CMRPC would would be out of the picture, but that there could be a different sharing where some of Kathy's time could be funded. I know Kathy's been in, she's in quite a bit working on all the different grants. Right. Yeah. She's looking to see anything she can get for us. One of the other ones. Invoice 17, because there was three of them. Oh, here it is. I'm sorry. Yep. You had already signed. Oh, yeah. Do you want to put the paper put the, yeah, okay. put it yep. back on? Yep. I can do that. Something I can do. Thank you. <laughs> then we have invoice number three to sign. Seventy-one. One is six eighty-seven ten. One of them is twenty-six hundred five dollars and twenty-eight cents, and all of it's paid for out of the CBDG grant funds. A good use those, of our taxpayer. Those are the. Are those in support of Hyde and Hayden? Or yes. Those? Yes. Uh, okay. yes. Yes. Those are Hyde. These are Hyde and Hayden. Okay, the next one is on the workers' comp. It's um, MEGA, and uh, that cost on this one, the cost of it had gone up from last year, and I guess it's because of, from what I understand, it's because of um, the employees' contracts and all things like that. That's why it went up. Last year it was 25590 and this, week, this year it's $28,733. That's on the um, MEGA renewal quote for FY20, the work is comp. Yep. Oh, because it's not so much the contracts as it would be the, uh, the overall salaries. Yeah, yeah it was the con salaries, that's why it went up. Okay. Where is the signing point? There's a red tab over there. Yeah, but there's no, there's no place should, to sign we, it though. Yeah, pick a place. And Maybe. Oh, that's what I was just looking for through the yeah, whole packet yeah. and see if it was on the back page or something. Oh. There, there you go. There we go, way back here. Mm. Oh, if anyone's wondering where Karen is this evening, Karen's neighbor clipped a telephone pole and her street is closed off with the power lines down and the like. Across the driveway? Yeah, they're on, in front of the drive, in front, 
on the street in front of the driveway. So she wasn't going anywhere. They said it would be several hours before power would be restored. First thing about the is the race box. Let me know why it's really scary. And the young fellow that was in the accident, she said he was fine. He's, the telephone pole was split right in half. Yeah. So we did a motion, right? Yeah. We did, and we, we did. seconded okay. it to be voted. All, all no. in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And these, what's next is some more special use permits for the lakes. And this one is for um, 89819 at the Quaybog Pond for the Relay for Life of Southern Worcester County. And the other one is for bass fishing, and that's it. I don't think this one should even come here. This is for Apple Road in Broomfield. Oh, wrong place. Wrong place. Oops. So, so you just I guess we're not approving that one. Nope. So if we want to approve this one, we'd like a yep. motion. Motion to approve. And Second. Beth just has to sign the one. We need to vote it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mo motion to sign the special permit. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, this is um, vacation. Let me see. There's another one before this. Not some resignations here. Did you go too fast? Yeah. It was supposed to have been right under here. Well, we'll skip over the resignation till I find till I find it. Okay, and this is a request uh, vacation carry over. And this is from um, Chief Martell, and I guess he has 48 hours. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. And then there's also one from Karen to uh, carry over 20 hours of vacation also. I like so, a motion. Motion to carry. For to both of them? approve both. All Second. in favor? Aye. 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 I don't even know where the, the resignation is. Oh, it's down here. <laughs> down here. Okay. We have um, the re uh, resignations will go up. We have two from the um, CIPC. We have Al Jones and we have Bob Falter. And, you know, both of them have done an excellent job on this committee. We hate to see them go. So we'll need two more members. So I'd like to have a motion for that. We, motion. we accept their resignation. Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Now we have all of these. Um, now we have the FY20 appointments. And there's quite a few of them here. Use for the board. So. So those highlighted need to be yes, read. Yes, all the ones. So I can start off reading some, and if you want to finish, finish them. Okay. On the advisory board, uh, for a for three-year term is Krista LeBron. Agricultural Commission is James Dolan and Ron Starcher. And Kenneth Cleveland will be, he, oh, he's also. And then we have um, AG alternates are uh, Donald Haverlin and Mark Ledoux. Animal Control is Sarah Perdue. And then Beach Committee is Rosie Kodalski, Donna Sullivan, Al Jones, Leonard Farr, Kathy Farr, David Ayers, and Matthew Langevin. Actually, Donna resigned, but oh. we, we can just leave this go and then okay. we can do it formally. Okay. Yep. And now uh, this is for um, local building inspector. It was the assistant, but now I guess they're calling it local. And his name is John Zacharias, I can't say. And that's till 2022. And then on the bylaw by committee is um, James Cook, uh, Barbara Wilson, and Tara Brown, and Robert Bonds and Harry Pearson. So I think we need to be careful because I know I'm fairly certain Tara Brown resigned. Oh. I don't so, know. Did she get back so, to Karen about so being I'm willing to go back on? What no, I don't know. I, so I don't remember the, seeing anything that she wanted to resign. 
I, I, I'll mark up this one, Linda. Or yeah, you're, mark, yeah, you can I'm mark, mark that up one. with just a little box. Yeah, some little blocks, and we'll tell Karen. The okay. Boxes are questions. All right. And okay. Yeah, I know Donna's was late in coming, so that this doesn't surprise me. But yeah, so we want to reappoint. Um, Peter O'Connell to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Right. And then we'll need two others, seeing that um, Bob and um, Al got off. Okay, now this is the Central uh, Mass Regional Planning Commission, and um, this is for uh, a one-year plan, and it's Kevin Urkula. He will be the alternate. Mm -hmm. and, and then we need uh, to reappoint all the CBG Advisory Committee. Uh, we have Beth Coughlin, Bruce Clark, Lucinda Thompson, Bethany Roberts, Mary Lou Knight, and Bill Simpson. And then we'll just take... I would like to revisit the bylaw committee. Sure. Um, so do we, do we have... We don't have a requirement in our bylaws to have a bylaw committee, correct? Because mm -hmm. one of the things I'd kind of like to see us do is, is really have a charter for that committee before we reappoint them and get I think some concurrence there was, from I them. think there was a charter when it did start. I'll have to have Carol, I yeah, can write a note. Before we even reappoint that okay. committee, because I, I, I don't feel like we provided clear guidance to that group with regards to what the intent is and mm -hmm. what we feel we need as a community, and I think we need to get some a little bit more of an azimuth about where we're going from okay. a standpoint of the bylaws. Well, there is a note here on the page of hold off and ask. So we should schedule something for later in the summer yeah. with this committee? With this committee, I think. Do you want yeah. to grab that on your minutes? Certainly. <clears throat> and I'll, I just put a note, I'll ask Karen if there was a, I'm pretty sure we had a charter when we first started that committee. Okay. All right. Okay, and on. Okay, we did that. Yeah. And then, uh, Conservation. Okay. And then we'll be uh, also on the Capital Improvement Committee um, at large, a liaison to the, for the Board of Selectmen is Kathy LaRocca, so we want to reappoint her. Mm -hmm. What I'll do after I read all of these, then we'll vote to reappoint all these people that we've just mentioned. Yeah, as, as discussed. Yeah, as discussed. Right. These are Does that go along with you or like that? Um, cool. Certainly. I, yeah. What I'll do is, as dis when we say as discussed, I'll, I'll annotate any exceptions that, that we're not voting. How's that work? Okay. Oh, yeah, good point. All right. Then, we, then we'll come back down here. Uh, Conservation Committee is um, Kenneth Cleveland and Michael Dean. Constable for a year is Arthur Tatro. Mm -hmm. Is Count there a reason you didn't mention Marianne? Oh, she didn't have it highlighted. Is it highlighted on you? She oh, yeah, okay. Marianne Morano, she is going on. Um, she's a new person on the Conservation Commission also. Okay. Yes. Good. And, and on the Council on Aging, we have uh, Bethany Roberts. Yep. Is that new one? We have Mara Canty, Mary Falado, Sally Brown, and Brenda Parrish. And on the Cultural Council, we have William J. Simpson to reappoint and Madeline Swanson. And we'll go down here to the Emergency Medical Squad Chief, Donna LaFleur. And also for uh, Emergency Medical Squad officers, we have Peter Martell as the captain and Matthew Graves as a lieutenant. And the emergency medical squad uh, are all up for an appointment. Uh, Terry Anderson, David Martell, Daniel Driscoll, Ashley Max, Richard Phillips, Jay Haley, Matthew Roderick, John Glennon, and Raymond Landoni, and Michael Laird. Continuing. Continuing. Oh. Let's see. Yep. Emergency one. medical school. Um, there, there are more. Yeah, I just got Matthew Graves, Donna LaFleur, Peter Martell, and Mark Lovely. And then fire chief and forest fire warden is Peter Martell. And 
firefighters for three years. Uh, assistant chief is um, Herbert Chafee and Captain David Martell and Lieutenant William McLeod. And uh, Mike Seri had said there's no appointments for these, no appointment slips. And even where, this is another question I was going to ask. I know with all of the firefighters, I think Peter, yeah, Peter does all of these himself, doesn't he? Yeah, they, so, so, yeah, so, he's supposed to be the one to do the appointments. Yeah, so we really fighters. don't have to do them then. No. No, so we don't my, have to my do My understanding them. is that it's, that our structure yeah. is such that he's the one yeah, that ought to Yeah, that's what I, I had thought that myself when I saw all of these highlighted. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, historical commission, we have Thomas Morse and Judith Hitchcock and Michael Metz. Historical Public Record Committee, uh, Linda Lincoln from the Board of Selectmen, Sally Brown from the Library Trustee, and Brenda Metterville from the Library Trustees. We have the um, Insurance Advisory Committee, Barbara Clancy for the retirees, Sherry Gillen for teachers rep, uh, Linda Lincoln for the town, town hall retirees, Joanne O'Connell for the non-certified school staff, Sergeant uh, Stephen Pariseau for the police union, Holly Chisholm for town clerk, town hall staff, Dennis Clark for the water, and Donald Herbert for highway department. And then we have uh, the master plan implement committee. Uh, we have Russ Faniff, uh, Allison Wellman, and Linda Purse. We should put a hold on this. Put a hold on this one too? Yep. And, and the reason I know Russ had moved off to planning and Linda had resigned. Oh, okay. And, uh, and we really haven't done anything that the, uh, if we could put it in the notes, that we need to reform once the open space uh, activity is moving forward, okay. we need to circle back to master yeah. plan. Okay. So what should I annotate? What we should say is uh, uh, master plan implementation committee not appointed, um, uh, held until open space activities are completed. And then the same thing, I, she didn't, we do have the open space down here, but it's probably the same, unofficial, no applications. I mean, no um, appointments needed for them either. It's on the bottom. Yeah, we don't have to do it. No, yet. we don't have to do those yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, overseers of the uh, dispatch is Michael Blanchard. Uh, parking clerk and hearing officer is Michael Seary. Uh, the personnel board's all set. Uh, we have police officers. One year, Serenity Allen, Brian Kirby, Greg Pianca, Michael P. Green, Justin Dufault, Herbert Duggan, Matthew Niles, Brian Stearns, Joel Wilson, and Daniel Driscoll. Okay. Now, Quaybog Valley uh, Community Development yep. uh, is Clarence Snyder. Yep. And then on the Recreation Committee is Lisa Hanrahan. Board of Registers with the Town Clerk is Shirley Sanborn. S uh, Source Water Protection Committee, Trudy O'Connell and Jennifer Grabowski. Oh, and Bruce. Or am I? Bruce is highlighted. Oh. I don't have another page. This is my last page. Oh, well, then I'll finish up. Yeah, then. you can finish up. That's Bruce, my last and then uh, Highway Superintendent, uh, Highway Superintendent of Insects and Pest Control is Ryan Paul Grand. And that's that for that page. And then the last page, Tree Warden, is Mary Lou. That doesn't sound right. That's not right. Ryan is the Tree Warden. Yeah, he's the <coughs> Ryan Tree Warden. Yep. Ryan Pompriani. Yeah, Mary Lou would not be happy if we tried no. to appoint no. him Tree Warden. Because you were the, uh, you were on. For like two months, yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, Ryan wants it. Or not doesn't want it, but he's winning. And he's got some skills. It, yeah, he's well. Yeah. He's already done yeoman work, as far as I'm concerned, on that topic, just Absolutely. because of feedback that I received the other day. All right, so that uh, does that, and then we have under Veterans Agent Three Year Gary Lapine. I have WRTA representative is Rose Carrier. I appreciate Rose doing that. Um, Zoning Board of Appeals Ken's the uh, the only one that needs to be reappointed, and zoning. Um, Zoning Board of Appeals. I interesting, interesting. Oh yeah. Oh. Something. So, so just to be clear, 
what this document is telling me mm -hmm. is Zoning Board of Appeals is Tim Simon is appointed to 2023, Ken is appointed mm -hmm. to 2024, Charlie Wilson to 2020, yeah. Bill Nall to 2022, and uh, Danielle Fourier White to 2021, mm -hmm. and an alternate member of Steve Comptoist to yeah. 2021. Yeah, but our, in our annual town report, though, states that Steve Comtois is chair, which has been de facto how he's been, and that Tim Simon and Roger are the alternates. Well, maybe they change. Well, we'll have to check that so out. That's gonna, another one. We need to, needs well, that's to. what was interesting was yeah. that actually, to, um, I, I recall the selectman meeting where that went down was that... Um, when Steve was still on the board of selectmen, Tim Simon was the one that was put forward to be the primary member, and I believe he chose to appoint him as an alternate and changed his own appointment to being the primary. So apparently the records never yeah. got updated to reflect that. Okay. That Karen's working off of. Okay. So it's uh, indicated that in the town report. So it needs okay. to, what we have is we need to have I'll have her, we'll yeah. have Karen check on that. Yep. Okay, Zoning Enforcement Officer Zick Tomo and Town Council, KP Law through 2020. Okay, and I would like a motion to appoint um, all of these as we have discussed. Second. And reappoint them. Oh, mo motion to that effect? Yeah. Second. Second. You had something you wanted to add. Uh, well, I second with the following exceptions that you've indicated that uh, Ms. Sullivan has already withdrawn from the Beach yep. Committee. I requested a hold for the entirety of the bylaw committee until we have better clarification on okay. the charter for that committee. Uh, uh, Ms. Lincoln indicated the fire chief is the appointing authority mm -hmm. for the firefighters and that he should do and sign the slips for that. And then uh, Mr. Snyder indicated we would not appoint a master plan committee until the open space committee activities are closed out. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, so seconded as stated. Good. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. And now I see Andrew still in the crowd. And so is there something that Andrew needed from us before we jump on to the next topic? Um, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I just had a question. Uh, that, you know, we had corresponded sure. uh, I'm sorry. earlier no, about okay. uh, setting up a date for a venue for a public hearing to amend the FY17 CDBG grant. And I think we had thrown around either sure. doing it as part of a CDBG advisory committee meeting, um, but they wouldn't be available as an evening meeting or we could do it uh, perhaps on the next selectman's agenda um, but it could be a long and, and kind of interactive conversation and i didn't want to um, take over your your upcoming agenda either. this is going to be the finney discussion partly that yeah so it's a discussion to you know as you know there's some unexpended money left in the fy17 cdbg grant and uh, there, we've been narrowing down options for what could be done with it, and one would be to proceed further with the 15 Post Road project into um, a new phase for that, and another could be housing rehab, or it could be some of both. Um, so we just, you know, in order to make those changes, there has to be a hearing. Okay, and, so we need a um, hearing. We want to do it so pretty much as soon as possible. Yeah, could, could it be separate of our meeting, but immediately following it when? It night? certainly could. Or, or, or before. Or prior, prior, six. Yeah. But schedule well, for six. Yeah, we could, yeah. Okay. okay. So as a standalone hearing, 6 p.m. on 6 the night. 6 p.m. on the night. Okay. Because we really have to get to this, Andrew. Yeah, yeah we, as you know, I mean, the, the, the grant was recently extended, but there's not infinite time in it, so anything okay. that we so want to choose, we have six, to get it Okay, so I'll have Karen. Yeah. Now, that doesn't have to get posted in the paper, does it? It does, so I'll, I'll do that. Oh, okay. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that we had a, a yeah. date and time. Okay. So. So because we really have to figure out what we're doing. Yes. And if, if those monies can do that, that's really important. While we have some heat on this thing and we think we know what we're doing, yeah. we really need to press. Yeah, and I'll bring as much information as I can get from DHCD. Yeah, anything for mass development? Um, I'll, I'll be speaking to uh, Shyla Matthews uh, at a meeting on Friday, so I hope to get some information from her at that Appreciate point. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, back with all of these. Do you want me to leave these in the office, or do you want to take them home? Or what? Uh, I will take them home. I will return them tomorrow morning on my way to work. Well, it's no hurry. I mean, it's that time. I know, but the problem is if I don't return them the next day, it takes me three weeks yeah. to get them back here. Right. So that's okay. just the way it is. It either happens or it doesn't happen. <laughs> what I wanted to bring up other, other tonight was um, 
Paul, the custodian, had uh, told me how I guess Brenda wants um, file cabinets and things to be moved out of where it's going to be her new office. And Paul had moved a couple of them out here, but I don't know if this is going to be a per should be a permanent home for any of these because I know the, those. I think one of those is the planning board, and one is the advisory board, the file cabinets, and then there are two other ones that belong to you that are in there and there's the one that holds the maps and what, what else we got in there? then the community club has a big um, they also have a big um, cabinet in there and I think they're going to do an inventory and see what is um, in there CBA. and then hmm? ZBA as well. yep ZBA has got one in there also and then um, the copy copy machine will have to be moved in the mailboxes I don't know if we had some discussion on the mailboxes and um, and with the copy machine. Maybe after Brenda leaves, we could put them where Brenda was, and then people would just have access during the day. And when Mike, Mike is here on Wednesday evenings, and if they needed to get their mail on a Wednesday evening, they could probably come yeah. in on a Wednesday. If that doesn't Either that or can we just clear out the space behind the, the counter here and just for now put the mailboxes there? Mm. I don't know. I, no, no. This mailbox thing has been no, a pain. No, it's been too. People have been going in and looking well, through, and things have been missing. That's so why that's it, why it's better off to be, you know, locked yeah. up when yeah. nobody's here. To be secure where yeah. Brenda was sitting would yeah. be. I think that's thing. the thing. And if it doesn't work, if there's complaints, then we need to get lock boxes. Yeah. Okay. And um, did that cover your question? Almost. Oh. And that's where the copier should also go. But I don't know where we're going to put all these file cabinets. I mean, they can't be out here right. because they have something. The challenges of the copier, too. A lot of times the committee's needed after hours. We need <sighs> something after hours. So we may need to look at what some of the options are. Yeah. I'm we'll certain. have to do that. See, maybe we can keep that out here. Well, well that was, until they actually do the bathroom work, could we? Well, Philip Chafee had said that, that he wanted that locked. So that's why everything is out here now because of, uh, I don't know. For now, yeah. For now, yeah, that's yeah, got yeah. wires, but I don't know if that room will be big enough, if there'll be enough room to put um, the copier in there. We'll just have to so see. So temporarily, if we leave the stuff out yeah. here, mailbox definitely goes in there. Yeah, we'll have to put the mailbox. But, but the temporarily, yeah. if we, to the best point, maybe we just clear out behind the counter and, yeah. and use that space. We should, the copier, yeah. we should probably, the counter comes apart. They should really maybe try to bring that upstairs. We talked about that at some point. Mm, but it's still got, I don't know if it's still got old records in it. Because I know one time, that, um, one of our previous tax collectors had some, tax, that she had some things there, and I think the town accountant, the previous one, they had things locked up under there also. Well, so it, we should probably look and see just what's, what's can there. Can you ask, you want to ask them just to, see if that's a possibility because we had d talked about asking bill to hire somebody yeah. to, to move that well i know when we have moved it the highways they always used to help okay they're older now mostly mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay I'm yeah, good we'll as have... i once was but i'm not <laughs> okay well we'll have to leave get... it here for now right yeah we'll leave it here for now but we're just going to have to decide what we're going to do with all these uh, file cabinets the good news is we're actually making improvements yes. so we will face these things as yeah. we have okay or have to all right so the next one here we have a thank you department oh, do you want to, oh I, anybody I, I, else I, have any i'm sorry anything it, else under other it just just i met with the financial team today because uh, Karen had sent me an email that the financial uh, procedure document was updated by the treasurer's office, mm -hmm. so now it's gone the full circle. And so Karen was sending out that document to the, the principals, mm -hmm. the assessor, the uh, tax collector, mm -hmm. accountant, and treasurer, just double check that these are the documents. I know from the meeting today that there are at least two documents that the accountant is updating, and so that those need to go into the the current thing. What I suggested for Karen was for our meeting of the night that we adopt that revision. Okay. And that the importance of this is as we talk this audit, that we'll be working mm. towards the use of that document. That everyone is to be working to the tenets of that document. Mm -hmm. And if we're not, then that's grounds for uh, disciplinary action. 
and when when you have an auditor come to town and he asks you what your work instructions are you had better point to what your work yeah. instructions are and that you're working to them they might be wrong but we need to fix it related to this i had a discussion with our our current service provider for the town accountant yeah. work. and uh in the past when we had looked at getting an additional seat for vadar we had only looked at a full seat um i don't know if she's gotten the number yet but i think that we could get a read only seat that could be shared between the board of selectmen an advisory that would uh, and and she would be willing to go over a representative from each entity that she could show us how to uh, be able to have visibility into what the current like values are by accounts using the appropriate reports as well as indications as to whether uh, appropriate postings were occurring in a timely manner um, from a standpoint of ensuring you know, kind of, kind of a belt and suspenders. We're using a professional service mm -hmm. for accounting service, but this would allow us to to validate that the transactions that we should be seeing over mm -hmm. time are occurring in all of the offices that use VADAR. Um, so, if we wanted to do just a periodic check to say, hey, on a quarterly basis, are we caught up on posting our revenue? Are we caught mm -hmm. up on posting our mm -hmm. our warrants? We would have the option in a read-only environment that would mean that no person could fat finger any type of error who doesn't do that stuff for a living um, to be able to see that. And mm -hmm. I think from a standpoint of um, due diligence and the go forward, it might be something worth um, taking a look at, and it probably would be half the cost of a regular seat for Vadar. Okay. And the other, I understood that you're going to. Uh, be present at yeah. the next meeting. Yeah. Well, um, I had the town accountant and Brenda approach me, and they said that they would like to get together monthly, right. different with it than with Al. They said, okay. and we'll have a. They want to do the finance meetings like we used to have. I, I, this meeting included Al. And, oh, I know Al and, will be there, but they said that they wanted me to head it like I used to head. Oh, like, indeed, yeah, I, yeah, I, I that's think what that's, they. I think that's great. Yeah, yeah, that's what they wanted to do, and I agreed. And I said we could probably maybe have another one, uh, probably maybe the second week of July, on a Tuesday, and everybody said a Tuesday is you know a good day. Yeah. Uh, again, I default to you as far yeah. as the timing of that. Yeah. The agreements of today were monthly is important. Oh, yeah, that's what I said. And the, the next thing was that in, with respect to VADAR, there was communication between the accountant mm -hmm. and others relative to how to approach yep. VADAR to, to kind of stroke them to work towards what we'd like mm -hmm. <laughs> rather than what they'd like. So uh, there was discussion about that that you'll, they'll follow up with okay. you, I'm sure, on which gets the best point as yep. far as the use of VADAR. Mm -hmm. So there was a good, good good bunch of discussion okay. we got into a little bit of town meeting and how we can work to improve that yes because I thought it went well but there are th certain things as as we went through that we need to kind of get a little bit better yeah. at but again for uh, the advisory board for kind of a first pass of, of that team together they've done it they did it very I you did a very good job yeah yeah, yeah. 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 good job this yeah. year Got a couple of loose connections as far as communication, but again, I think that if we approach it another year, whereas you have that document available, that uh, those entities that have emails in space or whatever, that there'd be that one final check to make sure that the emails got to who they were supposed to get to and acted upon. Yeah. <clears throat> but otherwise, it was good. It was good. Yeah, no, it's, um, and the well, we, we were, you know, much more uh, together rolling into mm -hmm. it than me personally. I was you know, very, well, you've very, done very, a, very comfortable. Yeah, you did a you've lot done of, a lot of education and, yes. and reached out and done a lot of phone a friend work with other communities. Yeah. So I think that's been valuable. And then I think it was, a, you know, I think it was good too that you went up to see Deb Wagner at the Department of Revenue too, and she explained a lot more out to you. Mm. She's 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 wonderful and she's yeah. she's available. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're available to help yeah. us at any time. Yeah. Would it be appropriate to have a, 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 at least once or twice uh, uh, an advisory representative at this at this Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. To. Sure. If once yeah. somebody would Not like sure to come who in. It won't be me, but you know, uh, um, maybe somebody would like to 
No problem if I uh, find out and get, get an email address who would want to come because I think what we'll do, they said uh, Tuesday mornings would be good okay. when we talk. I'll knock it around. We have our first meeting on the 11th. Okay. But I'll be communicating with people. Okay, Steve. That, okay. that is a good idea. I, I wouldn't mind that. I think that's a good input. And then okay. they can bring things back to you. Yep. Okay, okay anything else under nope. other? Nope. Those are the two things I was thinking about. Okay. Beth? Anything on to other? Uh, the only thing I was thinking of is I would like to get a current status on tax title. Um, there was a CBGD, uh, not CBGG, CMRPC email today on tax title that they've hired or uh, sorted out or ferreted out a entity to do tax title. Great. So I sent that to Karen yeah. to be distributed. Right. So, yeah, but I, I would like to hear from, from okay. the tax collector and the treasurer about where we are with the stuff that okay. we've already been acting okay. on to the best of our knowledge. Maybe we're just to a point, Beth, maybe have another run. My, my run is about almost a year old now, of yep. top to bottom. Exactly. So maybe could we ask that and put that back on our agenda for another time, Linda? Which? Let's have a, have a rerun of who owes us what. And tax titles? Yeah, yes, and, if, and we actually we need KP to give us an update on what's in land court and if any of that's moved. Okay, okay, let me get that down. Speaking of one that's moved, July 11th, we'll be looking forward to some $40,000 worth of income, hmm. one way or the other. So from KP Law, you wanted to know their status with them but in land court. court? And I know that this next date at land court will be July 11th. So I will talk, if you want me to, I'll talk to the tax collector and I will talk to the treasurer and tell them, you know, the current status on tax title. Yeah, and if we could have a run of, yeah. of the back taxes. Yeah. back taxes. And again, not the, not the nickel dime one, but, yeah. but the big, big chunks again. Because we had agreed, I think, with this list that I have, that there were certain properties that we were taking aggressive action, and then there were mm -hmm. those that we were just holding and waiting and again yeah. look to yeah. Brenda to give us some of that information. Yep, exactly. Anything else? <laughs> God, I thought Bess was going to say that was going to write it down. <laughs> no, I think that's good. All right. Brenda, or uh, Linda. Ken? I'd like to request that you kids stick around right on the road and see what the uh, wildlife is doing. It's like a different area. Could have cut it. And see, watch a million and a half dollars worth of equipment. Now, is that where, um, was that on the Garen property? Across from Salmon Brook. Salmon yeah, Brook the Garen Brook. property that Vic Garen used to own. Is that the, because, isn't that, they, didn't he give that to the Fish and Game? I don't know that name, but it's at the oh, top yeah, of Vic, the hill. Oh, Vic Garen? Yeah, yeah. that's Vic's property, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And what that used to be. In 1923, mm -hmm. that used to be a field yeah. of 11 acres, roughly mm -hmm. 11 acres. Yeah, and then and now what's happening is that the birds are going to be able to go up in there. Yeah. Well, the kids they stopped this morning, and the son of the guy that owns the hood said he said I never saw so many deer watching the machines go back. <laughs> oh, I'll have to take a ride up. Just yes. stay out out of, out of the way. Yeah. It's so big. No. They wouldn't even see you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. Get, no, I should. I should take a ride up and see. No, Once just. Black is uh, very happy with it, and then they're gonna do the hundred acre thing. So they get this done and pull all the stumps out, making it look nice. Sort of. I guess. Well, if would you guys, if they have some possible way we could get a half. <clears throat> And we talked to Fletcher about yeah. that. Yeah. We gave him a suggestion. He, he smiled. Yep. <laughs> because again, once the tote roads in the the woods mm. get created, those would be good good trails. Yeah. And it would be, be yeah. It'd be like in the upper field coming down one hundred forty eight that's they made a park and then in Cleveland. That's what the next hundred acres is gonna be. Oh. Over, well I think Sharon's husband had been coming about open. It's so white yet, it's not that warm of the road. Put a lot of space open up. Yep. Excellent. Oh, good. That's, I'm glad to hear that they're going to develop it and make it bird oh, sanctuary. That's nice. Right, right. 
No, no, I mean just develop the property. That's what well, I Well, I think the conversations that we've had with the new mm -hmm. district representative who was here and a part of the open space has made inroads on them actually mm -hmm. investing in the town of Brookfield. Just that 11 acres is like something like 7,000 dollars worth of wood. They got it all piled up front and people come and take it. And I asked them, I said, where does this money go? <laughs> it could come back to the town for taxes that we haven't been paid for how many years. He just smiled at me and I said, okay. No. Okay, so on that, it seems how Ken's brought that yes. ugly subject we up. We want to give our, him... Our, our friend Al is on top of that particular topic because there are pilot, it's called pilot money, and that pilot money is to come back to the towns in lieu of taxes. And so there is a great conversation mm -hmm. going on between Al and Wildlife with respect to mm -hmm. what that number ought to be because the pilot dough went up and ours... Our input or our feedback was flat, and that's because money's going to other places like Boston. And so it's, is that fair, was the question being asked. Speaking of Ann Gobi's aid and how uh, we're, we're pushing back on what is owed to us through the pilot program. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's all so I know about that topic. The whole piece there on that right-hand side going up to the line was because it's all quite late, so... Right. They're probably the biggest landowner in town. Pretty funny when we're exporting wood to Canada. We are, and China. <laughs> That's a whole other topic. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, any others from anybody else? Time to go home. No, we got to do correspondence. Oh, go for it. We'll do this quick. Uh, this is from the school, from the superintendent, and um, she wrote this to Herb but he's not, he, she said on half of the Brookfield School Committee at Tantasqua and the students of the town of Brookfield, I want to extend a heartfelt thank you for the cooperation of the Brookfield Highway and ensuring safe road passes during this past week. Good job again. Good job again. All right. But again, back to climate change. We're dealing with ice. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you got assault, and that's unfortunate, but that's what you got to do. Okay. Now this is from uh, Doug Powers. Uh, he's a property he's from North Brookfield. He says, as required by law, I am informing you I intend to remove 57A Molasses Hill Road from Chapter 61. It consists of approximately 31 acres of land, and he's requesting that you consider this request at your June at the meeting this evening uh, and see if we have any interest in acquiring the land. If not, he would appreciate a thank you for your time and consideration. Yeah. I don't so, think so it's the address again on that. Mm -hmm. Or oh, the address? It was an email he sent. Yeah, his no, address. No, but his property 30, 31 address. Molasses oh, Hill. It's 50, 57 Molasses Hill oh, sorry. Road. Um, and then it's, he has 30 acres of land, 31 right. acres of land. And so it's going to solar. Oh. And so uh, what we do here is that... I don't think that the town has an interest, nor do we have monies to do no, anything we anyway. No, I don't think we have any and interest And so in the it. motion would be that we uh, would not take advantage of the right of first refusal. So that would be the motion. Okay. I'll second that. And then uh, for discussion, this these are monies that would go into the fund that we yeah. created. Yes, they're evolving and that funds. Maybe the created. next time we can decide the where decision. those funds go. Um, I would suggest, however, with specific to open space and the grant that we're writing for the playground in Lewis Field, that this money could go towards um, the, uh, we're getting set, uh, the Lewis Field uh, project would be 70% um, money from the state, a grant for that, and 30% would be over the town. This money could go, and again, I'm looking at Steve to suggest yes. that this would be monies that would go towards the town's portion of that payment. Okay, he has, I didn't notice, he had a map. I guess there are a few houses around it, but this must be the whole area oh, yeah. where he wants to put it. Yep. I spoke with Anstar last week, and they wanted to, they couldn't take them anymore. They were going for a $2 million transfer station in Brookfield, if I can't ask for Substation, not transfer station. I'm sorry. Substation. So they're in Sturbridge on 20, making it bigger, so it, because they already own the land and they don't have to buy the land. But we'll put it on a piece of that until trying. Trying. Okay.
Karen's. Oh, so we need to vote that. Uh, yeah, and Karen said maybe if you wanted to explain some. Oh, yes. I know that she said okay, that. so we're going to vote the, that we're not interested in molasses. Oh, okay. We're not. Okay, I'd like to have a motion that we have a motion. Uh, yeah, we have a motion and we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So now um, what we have here is the recommendation from the Beach Committee as far as the contract with Wildlife for this year. And so they're, they're recommending that we sign uh, on the town's behalf to move forward with uh, the Beach Committee working with Wildlife mm -hmm. this year. So if you could sign a motion to sign the Beach Access uh, document and your signature by the licensee. Okay. So the beach cleanup has gone well. Good. And when are they supposed to be starting over there on the bridge? I don't know. Will they be starting collecting monies this year? No. The, okay. So where this is is that's a possibility. But what will have to be a side agreement. What we've what they've done is they've made a recommendation for the fees, and so that needs to get agreed to between. Uh, wildlife in the town or through the committee and if it does then there will be that an action to move forward with the fees for the beach only they're only going to work on the beach they're not working the boat access thing at least for, yeah. for this year yeah yeah so and, and again the fees the whole idea of the fees so that if we're on camera and people hear it the idea is that the beach is not used only by the town of Brookfield it's used by a lot of yeah. other folks and this is a way that we might be able to collect some money from those folks entering town. If it works, great. If it doesn't, and, at least and, we try. And frankly, people value something more even if the fee is nominal. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the, it, it, even just the fact that you get charged a fee to be there tends to change behavior. Yep. So. I wish them luck. They're doing a great job. Yeah. Uh, do you kids uh, charge these clubs, fishing clubs that that's what we're working on for next year. That's the next year. Yeah, so, like twenty-five thousand dollars boats. How many ten miles is going to hurt them? So, so here's the deal. So the learning in this process is that the fishermen cannot be charged. The, those that are are launching their boats can't be charged for fishing. They can be charged for launching. The, those funds would then be, uh, if we could choose to collect them, would then go towards the porta potty that the boat access people are paying the, uh, the porta potty uh, expense from November, uh, from April to November. So that actually the state is actually paying for a portion of this that uh, we, we were unaware of. Dave is looking forward to your oh, sealing that deal. Good. Thank you. Okay. All right. We voted that, right? We did. Yeah. We did. Yeah. 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 Good. Okay. Next on the agenda is uh, from Chief Martell uh, for 2018 Volunteer Fire Assistance Program. We he has a grant that's been approved for uh, one thousand six hundred and forty-two dollars and fifty cents. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, Thank sure. you. And this is from. Um, Barbara Supernot, the woman that's going to be doing the swimming classes over at South Pond, she wants to uh, change the date from uh, July 8th to uh, July 18th through so the 26th. Can we get that to David? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll take, take it out until Lois takes it. 